Hello kind people of YouTube and welcome back to another video. Today again we have a lot of news to get through so let's get this started. As always we're going to take a quick look at the crypto markets before going through a bunch of news articles and I'm going to talk about them for a moment. Start by refreshing coin market cap here. Um, after three days of very little movement when half a week ago the markets crashed we now see significant movement again and um, as you can see here in the seven day graphs, um, a lot of the tokens briefly recovered to pre-crash amounts and then found their place somewhere in the middle. As you can see here, Bitcoin briefly reached the pre-crash amount before, before settling in the middle. Ethereum just shot straight for a middle ground. XRP is almost back at pre-crash amounts. Bitcoin Cash settled in the middle. EOS went above pre-crash and settled in the middle. We see similar movements among most tokens here. So in general, the crypto market has gained quite significantly, over 1% up over yesterday. And um, if you were checking a couple hours ago when all this happened, it would have been up even more. But since then it has pulled back. Now the market cap is at 205.4 billion. If you remember in yesterday's video, I was talking about a $203 billion market cap. And the volume is still at about 11 billion. Nothing much has changed there. And Bitcoin dominance still at 54%. Hasn't has pretty much done the exact same movement as the rest of the crypto markets. As you can see here, Bitcoin up 0.92% and the markets in general are also up about 1%. So Bitcoin neither out nor underperformed altcoins today. The big winners are Cardano, EOS and XRP. Though of course you have to keep in mind that all of these are still below values from a couple days ago. But it looks like we, have, we are on the way to recovering from this minor crash. And it is very much looking positive right now. But what do some experts in the crypto world, some important people think about the long term? And there we have very conflicting opinions and I prepared an article from CCN where we'll go over a few of them. Um, as always, all these articles are linked in the description. I might not read them all out fully. So if you want to make sure to read them yourself, the links are in the description. In the description, you'll also find ways to support this channel. You'll find my social media pages. Everything is down there. And because I keep forgetting to say it, if you like these videos, if you want to get daily crypto news updates and discussions, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, let's start reading. Bitcoin prices and trading volume might keep plummeting and the current bear market could last another 18 months. That's the sobering assessment of Arthur Hayes, the CEO of the Bitcoin Mercantile Exchange, BitMEX, the world's largest Bitcoin derivatives trading platform. My view is the volatility environment that exists right now could persist for another 12 to 18 months, the flatness, Hayes told Yahoo Finance. I'm just basing it off my previous experience. Hayes started trading crypto full time in 2013 after losing his job as an equities trader at Citibank. The Hong Kong based executive said the trading patterns today resemble the nuclear bear market he witnessed in 2014. I started in Bitcoin in 2013 when the prices went from $250 to $1,300, Hayes recounted. And then 2014 to 2015 was sort of the nuclear bear market. Prices crashed, volume crashed, very, very difficult to make money. Cryptocurrency trading volumes recently plunged to a new year low following the summer slump. Hayes said volume could drop more in the coming months. We think trading volumes could fall further from where they are now, he said. This is a stunning about face from the exuberant $50,000 year and Bitcoin price target Hayes said back in June of 2018. At the time, he said Bitcoin prices were just one positive regulatory decision away from, what, um, from rocketing past $20,000 on its way to $50,000 by December of 2018. This does not appear realistic given current market conditions. Yeah, I would, I would agree there. While Arthur Hayes has a bearish near-term outlook on the crypto market, he's bullish about the industry's long-term prospects. Other market participants agree that the industry is currently flailing, but the long-term outlook is very bullish. The market is blowing off some steam right now, Will Warren, the co-founder of decentralized crypto exchange ZeroX, told Yahoo. The market is probably going through some healthy consolidation, but I do believe the long-term trend will be greater adoption of Bitcoin and similar technologies. This is very much what I have also been saying for pretty much the entire time that I've had this still young channel. Uh, all this short term movement we see short and midterm shouldn't distract you from the fact that the underlying technologies below cryptocurrencies and a lot of the projects involved in the markets are extremely promising and are, are gaining more and more mainstream interest and adoption and use cases. 
So the mid and long, long term future is incredibly bright. So don't let these slums disencourage you. If anything, use these as an opportunity to buy while the prices are low. low you have time to do that right now. Jonathan Levy, uh, Levi, um, the CEO of blockchain startup Hasara, agreed. The price of Bitcoin is undoubtedly in a bear market, but in the appreciation of Bitcoin and other blockchain projects, we are in fact in a bull market. Most of the EU banks are actively investing in blockchain, and that all originally stems from Bitcoin. While many in the crypto community are in panic mode over the market's current downswing, cryptocurrency evangel evangelists, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a mess again today, who have followed the market since its inception are not worried over short-term blips. Tech entrepreneur Wences Casares, I probably completely mispronounced it, I'm very sorry about that. The founder of Bitcoin wallet provider Xapo said it could take decades to know for sure if Bitcoin is successful. Cesaris said it's possible that crypto might fail, but that's unlikely, as CCN has reported. At this point, the chances of success are better than the chances of failure. So we see here between large voices in the crypto world, very much a consensus that we might be in a slump right now that might continue for a while, but the long term is looking incredibly bright. And um, I can pretty much undersign this 100%. This is the opinion I have been holding for a long time now. This is the opinion I have been holding for years, essentially. Since before the late 2017 bubble, I was holding this opinion and I think it still applies now. Whatever happens in the mid and short term, these technologies, these currencies, these projects have incredible potential and more and more people are recognizing that and that money will flow into the markets at some point. Now Coinbase is once again in the news as it is almost every day right now. And they've had a very peculiar mixture of um, both raising a lot of money and expanding significantly and of um, a lot of people being fired, let go or leaving. And this is just the latest in their long line of recent turnover. The head of trading at Coinbase, Hunter Merkart, has resigned from the US crypto exchange and wallet provider after just six months on the job Coindesk has learned. Merkart made the decision to leave the company last week and is now exploring other opportunities according to people familiar with the situation. Coinbase declined to comment on the move when reached. His departure follows that of the executive who hired him, Adam Wright, who left Coinbase earlier this month to become the chief operating officer of BACT, the new institutional crypto trading platform being launched by Intercontinental Exchange, the parent of the New York Stock Exchange. White, who was Coinbase's fifth employee and most recently a vice president and general manager there, hired Merka to join Coinbase Institutional at the start of May of 2018. He joined from the UK-based megabank Barclays, where he worked as a de director of US equity trading since 2015. Merkert is leaving out of frustration that he wasn't getting enough resources or clarity on the roadmap to building an institutional business, according to two people familiar with his reasons. Earlier this month, Coinbase confirmed it had just shut down an index fund geared towards institutional investors just four months after it went live. So first of all, let me just repeat something that I always say when we're talking about companies um, letting off people or people leaving. Um, crypto is very much a new business, a new um, sector. And what we see in a lot of tech startups and uh, most crypto companies can be, um, can be considered tech startups. Um, what we see both in Silicon Valley and in other places is um, a lot of turnover in the early years. A lot of people will, um, will sign on to work with a company and just months or a year or so later, they will leave. That isn't necessarily something to be worried about. Now for Coinbase, we are seeing it so much that it does become worrying. It is pointing towards some internal problems that they seem to be having with a lot of people seemingly unhappy about the direction the company is taking. We have seen a lot of people leave. We have seen a lot of people be fired. We have seen a lot of internal criticism and this is just the latest of that. Um, as a whole, the company seems to be in very good health, um, raising a lot of money, it recently got a valuation of, I believe it was 8 billion US dollars, which is absolutely insane, makes them one of the biggest crypto companies, if not the biggest. Well, not the biggest, because um, companies like Ripple have more funding, but it definitely puts them up there. So um, as a whole, they still seem very much in good health, um, but there are some worrying things coming out of Coinbase every now and then, and they, they seem to be piling up right now. They, they really seem to be coming in a lot. Um, something internally just does not seem to be going quite as well as they'd wanted to with a lot of people, including people who have high positions, unhappy to the point of leaving. Continuing on. 
In other exchange-related news, Bitfarm signs deal with US fintech firm to open security token exchange. Major South Korean cryptocurrency exchange Bitfarm has reportedly signed a deal with an American fintech firm in an effort to open a securities token exchange in the US, South Korean Yonhap News Agency reported on November 1st. Citing individuals familiar with the matter, Yonhap reports that Bitfarm signed an agreement with American crowdfunding platform Series 1, a Bitfarm official purportedly uh, told the news agency. Series 1 actively sought to strike a deal with Bitfarm after assessing it as the most suitable partner. Bitfarm will ramp up efforts to develop into a global financial firm as the blockchain-based asset tokenization is expected to spread globally down the road. Security tokens, in addition to allowing holders to purchase goods and services, often promise investment returns and value appreciation, much like a traditional security. Sources purport, uh, purportedly told Yonhap that Series 1 will establish the exchange in the US during the first half of 2019. While Bitfarm provided, uh, provides investment and the necessary technical support for operating the exchange. The rest is just some more background. So we see here another major exchange making a grab for another market with a lot of institutional money, a lot of traditional investment in it. This is just more signs of cryptocurrency, of blockchain going even more mainstream in the institutional world. And this is the kind of stuff because we get these news every single day. If you've been following my channel, I talk about one story like this or sometimes two stories like this every single day of more institutional interest, of new financial products, of new companies being launched in the institutional world. All this money will flow into crypto and that is one of the reasons I think the long term and mid term future is so incredibly bright. Continuing on. Morgan Stanley reports says crypto now an institutional asset class. Institutional investors are increasingly getting involved in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, while the number of retail investors in the space is staying stagnant, according to a new report by Morgan Stanley. In an update to Bitcoin Decrypted, a brief teach-in and applications, the global banking giant's research division delved into the last six months of Bitcoin and highlighted certain trends it noticed. The report is dated October 31st. Perhaps most notably, the report emphasized its rapidly morphing thesis, which began by defining Bitcoin as digital cash and noting that investors had full confidence in it, to a solution for issues in their financial system, to a new payment system, to ultimately a new institutional investment class. Various issues and discoveries around the Bitcoin ecosystem have caused the thesis to evolve, including the permanent ledger recording all transactions, a number of hacks, hard forks, new technologies which are cheaper than Bitcoin, market volatility and other concerns, the report explains. As such, the group's current thesis is that Bitcoin is a new institutional investment class and has been for almost a year. The amount of crypto assets under management has been increasing since January of 2016, with 7.11 billion US dollars currently being stored by hedge funds, venture capital firms and private equity firms. The fact that major financial institutions are increasingly getting involved supports this thesis, the report continued, citing Fidelity's new crypto services division, investments in Seed CX, BitGo and Binance, regulatory approvals and Coinbase's recent fundraising round. That being said, the report did cite three issues clients had with investing in the cryptocurrency space, regulatory uncertainty, a lack of regulated custodian solutions and a current lack of large financial institutions in the space. And then they go into stablecoins for a moment, but um, I feel like I've talked enough about stablecoins the last couple of days for a lifetime. <laughs> The important takeaway here is that a massive, massive banking giant now considers crypto a new institutional asset class, which is an entirely new way of thinking about crypto and will ease more institutional investment into it. This essentially means that large banks, large banking giants, large um, financial corporations, at least Morgan Stanley, are now fully behind crypto as an investment. And that is, of course, where we want it to be as crypto investors ourselves because this will open the floodgates for even more institutional money to flow into crypto. Um, all of these individual stories don't mean that much, but all of them coming together and at such a frequency really change how crypto is seen by institutional investors, by the people with actual money and influence, and that is what we ultimately need. We need a slow but certain change from, uh, from cryptocurrency as that weird tech thing that is overhyped, which is what a lot of people saw it as a couple of years ago and what some people still see it as now, to the idea of crypto as a valid new asset class that has incredible potential, which is where we need to get. And this, every time we talk about news like this, it is one more stepping stone in that direction. So yeah, 
I think the me I think today's video just has a has a message of hope. I didn't mean to do that, but the news coming out today just um all come together naturally in that way. Today's video is about hope and about thinking about the potential of cryptocurrency, where we can go in the future. The future is so incredibly bright and you just have to have patience and faith in it. Or not so much faith. Faith in Faith implies that it's belief without um, really looking into it, without logic, without um, rationality. But um, we have reasons to, um, to believe in crypto. We know the technology is valid. We know the potential is there. We know there are so many exciting projects there. So um, I am so positive on this. And uh, today is just such a wonderful day with all the news we've had. Continuing on. Blockchain software firm Consensus acquires Asteroid Mining Company. Now this, this I mainly included because it's just such an odd piece of news. Blockchain software technology firm Consensus Inc. has acquired American asteroid mining company Planetary Resources Inc. through an asset purchase transaction according to an announcement published on October 31st. Founded in 2009 and formerly known as Arcid Astronautics, Planetary Resources is supposedly engaged in the exploration, extracting and refining of resources from asteroids. The company, which reportedly has over 30 investors and has raised more than $50 million in investments, has sent two satellites into orbit over the last six months. Per the recent announcement, Planetary Resources has been acquired by Consensus to bring deep space capabilities into the Consensus ecosystem. Planetary Resources President and CEO Chris Lewicki and Council Brian Israel have joined Consensus following the acquisition. Commenting on the deal, Consensus founder Joe Lubin said that it reflects our belief in democratizing and decentralizing space endeavors to unite our species and unlock untapped human potential. Now this is pretty much what we need to read here. Um, this can be read in a variety of ways, but I think the most interesting angle to all this is that um, it shows companies that, that started out entirely in the crypto world, dealing with cryptocurrencies, dealing with blockchain technology only, are expanding further and further into other areas of science, of economy, of um, just in general expanding into other areas where we didn't see them in before. A lot of this is just due to a lot of money having flown into the crypto world. And a lot of these companies now have a lot of funding behind them that they can do interesting stuff with. And um, I'm unsure how strategically valuable this acquisition is. Um, it sounds like they got access to a lot of good um a lot of good staff from it. So to me, it sounds like they might have actually just been planning to get the staff away from this company. Um, that happens a lot in the tech world. Um, it it doesn't make a lot of sense if you're not already well versed in what is happening in tech. But um, what is happening is a lot of times when a company acquires another company, it's not actually because they want that company. It's not actually because that company has any, is of any particular interest. But it's often because of one of two things. Um, either that company has patents that the um, patents or some other intellectual property that the company buying it wants, or what happens even more frequently is that the company being bought has some really good people on staff. And the only way to get those people, because they usually can't just be hired away, they, they often have non-compete clauses and stuff like that. Um, they often have clauses where you can't, uh, they can't work in the same business for a couple of years or they can't be hired away at all. And often it's just easier to buy the company and get, get the staff that way. And at least with how this article is phrased and with them taking two of the main staff members away and integrating them into consensus, it sounds like they were primarily out for the staff here. Um, who knows what they will actually do with, um, with asteroid mining. Um, there are certainly some blockchain applications there. But it seems like a bit of an odd choice to buy this company. It doesn't seem like the most natural um, <laughs> natural way to expand for consensus, but um, they probably have good reasoning for this. The reasoning might just not be public. Continuing on. A token that I haven't yet talked about on this channel at all, I believe, Aragon, goes live on the Ethereum mainnet. Aragon, the Ethereum dApp for structurizing organizations, companies and communities, already has 15,000 users, but up to now has been operating on the Ethereum testnet. Following an announcement by Aragon yesterday, the human collaboration dApp is now available for users to create organizations live on the Ethereum mainnet. As per the release today, decentralized organizations get real. Aragon version 0.6 titled Alba 
heralds a new era for human collaboration, says Abergon. With the application, users can create a decentralized autonomous organization for their community or business, and then use it to discuss issues and vote on organizational decisions. The DAO concept can be applied to any kind of organization to foster effective governance or provide organizational transparency. Via Aragon 0.6, modules can be added to an organization's interface in the platform, allowing activities like fundraising through token generation. Aragon incorporates core areas of organizational structure, administration and jurisdiction, including accounting, governance and identity. There are three main components to the DAP, the first is voting. Version 0.6 boasts an updated voting interface, a vote for instance can authorize the withdrawal of funds for a project, then those funds and balances can be transparently managed within the finance option. Last, the token manager segment enables membership and ownership of the organization. Though Aragon is all about decentralization, the application has been upgraded to include permissions. Now only certain permitted people within an organization, for example, can run votes involving tokens. Though the application has been audited, Aragon says it's not yet advisable to store large amounts of funds in it. The project is currently running a bug bounty program and conducting further audits. The Oregon team is an active part of the Ethereum community and participates in Ethereum governments, uh, governance conversations and groups. Coinbase voting is suggested as one way to contribute to Ethereum community-based decisions. Though it remains to be seen whether the Ethereum community will move en masse to use the dApp, its mainnet release means projects have a workable way of managing coin voting and governance in the real world. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Aragon does have its own token as well. I believe it's also just called Aragon. So this sounds very exciting. This is a very, very, very big move for Aragon, going from a testnet to the main Ethereum blockchain, but very much still in beta, as it says version 0.6. This is not the final release and you shouldn't be storing a lot of money in it. Still, Aragon seems to be aiming for a very new type of governance, a very, very potential filled, um, potential filled space. Um, I'm unsure to which degree Aragon's technology will be able to get this market. I simply haven't read up on it. I don't know how good their technology is. But it definitely sounds incredibly exciting. This could have so many potential applications and seeing it go forward is good to see. A lot of, um, a lot of cryptographic projects, a lot of, coin, uh, a lot of um, blockchain projects kind of just die down after a while with the development just kind of stopping. Aragon seems to be evading that with active development and them now progressing onto the main blockchain. This is very, very exciting. And now let's end the video with a story about how XRP has been used once again for good. Now the cryptocurrency community has a lot of very, very good people in it. A lot of very generous people who want to help good causes. And where we see this reflected probably more than I've seen it in any of the other major tokens is with XRP's with Ripple's community. Um, after Ripple themselves have donated millions to a variety of projects, including a Malawi-based project where they worked together with Madonna to raise millions, um, now we see the, the um, Ripple community, not Ripple the company, also raise a lot of money for good in the form of over 21,000 XRP donated to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Individual efforts to raise funds for a good cause goes a long way when you have a generous crypto community as well as a social media platform to notify the world of your mission. One such individual is Twitter user KingBlueXRP. Just a quick shout out here, you are awesome for doing this. Um, I, haven't, I haven't heard of this guy before, I haven't followed him on Twitter or anything, but just seeing that he organized this and that um, through him, so much money has been donated for a good cause. That is beautiful. So very good job, job King Blue XRP. You're awesome. Um, who started an XRP donation drive to raise funds for the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. In a tweet a few hours ago, he notified his followers that the donation drive has reached a new milestone of over 21,000 XRP. Keep in mind at the current value that is about 10,000 US dollars, potentially in the future so much more. His tweet also gave June 27th as the date his mission to assist the hospital started. The exact tweet with the amazing message can be found below. Started the St. Jude project on the 27th of June and in just 4 short months we have broken 21,000 XRP donated and $2,665 in US cash. New goal, 25,000 XRP. What an amazing community, everyone has been so incredibly supportive. 
King Blue XRP has since updated on Twitter the actual numbers of the Sand Jude fundraising campaign. The statistics for the micro donation drive is as follows. Sand Jude has received over 705 tips via the XRP tip bot. 84 XRP has been donated using COIL, 19,403.7 XRP deposited, and a total of 21,012.05 XRP raised. That is just such a magnificent sum. The St. Jude Children's Research Hospital has since thanked King Blue XRP and all contributors for their efforts. The hospital has promised to set up mechanisms to collect crypto-based donations from generous givers from across the globe. And here you see the original tweet. And I've, I just thought this was so beautiful, I had to include this. Um, we see a lot of this in the crypto community, but especially with Ripple's community, with the XRP community. A lot of people giving so much, so generously to good causes. This is beautiful. And um, we see a lot of projects within the crypto world that is trying to um, that are trying to make the world a better place, that are trying to um, that are trying to create to support a new culture, a culture of giving, a culture of generosity, a culture of looking out for our fellow human beings. And it's always so beautiful. And um, I feel like I have a responsibility to talk about this stuff, to um, to give this as large a platform as I can. Um, I am certainly going to donate a bit to this after I finish making this video as well. And I would very much welcome if some of my subscribers would also join in on that. Any little thing helps. I mean, these these people, there's so much research going on there. They are saving lives. They are working on cancer. They are working They are working on so many things. They're, they're some of the best doctors in the world. Some of the best medical researchers in the world are working there. And they can use any XRP or any dollar or any whatever you give them. And I think it's beautiful to see the crypto community come together like this. And we need to talk about it. We need to... We need to take a megaphone and make as many people hear this as possible. And um, it has the added benefit of also improving the image of the cryptocurrency community. Um, every time this gets reported, especially when mainstream media picks up on it, that makes cryptocurrency, the whole crypto community look better. We are quickly moving away from the image that we had before, that um, the cesspool of crime, illicit activity, of um, of of nerds sitting around in their grandparents' basements and trolling people online. That is very much the image we used to have and we're moving away from that so quickly. And this is very much helping. And um, it just has this added benefit of, um, it is impacting real change by giving a lot of money to people that really need it. And it's also increasing and improving the image of crypto in the process. And I think that's wonderful. I think we should, uh, we, we should do more of this. It's just absolutely incredible. And with that, I'm gonna end today's video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like my channel, please make sure to subscribe. And if you really like my channel, please consider supporting me. There are some ways to do that in the description. But if you're gonna give anyone money today, especially if you're gonna give anyone XRP today, I would suggest you help this. You give that money to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. They need it more than I do. Um, as always, all the links to these articles are in the description, as well as ways to support the channel and my social media links, and an email address where you can ask questions that I might respond to in a potential future question and answer video. Um, I still don't quite have enough questions for that, even though I've been advertising this for a while. I think I, I overestimated interest, but at some point I'll still make it. So, <laughs> someday, someday. It might take another month or so, but I'll, I'll do it someday. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.